Here's a quick tip for your shoulder training along with a practical demonstration from a training session that I did with Dana Lynn Bailey a little while ago. The tip is to train your shoulders through a larger range of motion and most importantly through one that is more complex than the standard presses, front, side and rear raises. You see, when I grew up training, I learned that we're meant to be doing presses for the front delts or raises to the front for the front delts and then these side raises and rear raises or flies for the side and rear head of the deltoid. Now, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Although when you look more closely at the shoulders, what we know is that there's actually more than just the three individual heads of the front, side and rear. There's actually seven distinct heads to the deltoid region that are all capable of being activated and recruited in different planes of motion which means that there's some potential to be missing out on a lot if we just stuck with those three or four motions of the press and the three different raises. Now, what I'm showing here is not the only thing you have to be doing. These are just examples of how you might start taking and applying this tip immediately to your own training. The thing that I really like about these movements is that they're not just about isolating or biasing the one region to your shoulder, and instead it's about challenging the entire shoulder complex to work together as one cohesive unit. So your upper back muscles are working hard to stabilize and coordinate motion while the shoulders are being trained. This first series here is a mechanical advantage drop set. So we're going from the hardest exercise into the easiest exercise here without dropping the weight. This allows you to get a ton of density into your workouts very quickly quickly without having to use a lot of weights whatsoever. So you start with the butterfly raise and then once you fatigue you transition into the external rotation W fly and then into more of a typical rear delt upper back row and then finally you finish off with partials with that partial range rear delt fly. Now we did only two or three rounds here which trust me is more than enough. Give that a shot on its own with about maybe 90 seconds or maybe even up to two minutes between each round and you'll see what I mean in terms of the amount of blood flow and tension you create in the whole shoulder upper back complex. After this we went into the next exercise which is something that I call the side lying compound raise. Now this combines the lying lateral raise and an exercise called a power raise which targets the upper back and the rear delt muscles. There's also a fair bit of stability demands being placed on the shoulder region in that overhead position so other deeper muscles like your serratus anterior will be working a lot in this exercise as well. Now you're probably thinking right now awesome this sounds really cool I want to start doing it but how does it fit into my own personal training? Well we're going to look at that right now but before we do I highly recommend tapping the like button and subscribing on the channel if you haven't already because once you've done this workout you're probably going to lose the ability to be able to raise your arms and do anything with your arms for a little while. So if you're following a typical bro split where you have maybe like a shoulder day and a leg day or a back day and a chest day, this kind of thing fits in really neatly towards the end of the workout as more of a, a finisher or more accessory work, which is what we did on this particular session. From memory, we had done something like maybe two different presses and then we went into this to finish everything off. But this stuff also serves as a great way to warm yourself up and mobilize your body and your shoulder complex before going into more of your typical presses and rows as well. So you might just pick these exercises and do them with a very, very light weight and stay very far from failure points and just go through a couple of lighter, slower rounds. And lastly, you can also put them at the start of the workout, but not just as a warm up, but actually push them as hard as you can and use it as a pre fatigue stimulus. This is actually my personal favorite way to be doing this as pre fatigue work before doing my other pressing exercises because I personally find it helps a lot with the mind muscle connection that I get to my shoulders when I do things like heavy presses or heavy rows or pull downs after doing this kind of thing to warm everything up. And it also means I can limit the amount of weight I end up using on things like presses and rows and pull downs, which might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a really positive thing because it means I don't have to spend as much time or effort or energy in the gym working up to those heavier presses and heavier rows and heavier pull downs and I can just get straight into productive work. Now if you're not following a bro split where you have a separate shoulder day or back day or leg day but you're following more of a full body or blended half body or upper lower program then we've got to take a slightly different approach here. We want to be mindful of the fact that these movements here they're fantastic but they're not going to be complete replacements for things like your typical presses and typical rows. So I'd still be doing these exercises but make sure that you still keep in the typical compound exercises and use these again as accessory things whether you do it before or after or just at some point throughout the entire 
week. I try to get something in like this at least once per week through an entire week, and then the rest of the week could be devoted to more of my typical standard exercises. Again, I do want to stress the fact that what I'm showing you here is not what you absolutely have to be doing. These are just a couple of examples of how to start exploring and training these more unorthodox ranges. And again, it's not just for the fact of trying to be unorthodox and different for, for YouTube content, but more so to be covering our bases and hitting the shoulder complex in as many different ranges of motions and positions as possible. Now, if we count one of those sequences there, where, whether it's the complete mechanical advantage drop set or just that sideline compound raise exercise, if we count one of those two things as just one set, I aim to do around three to five sets like this throughout the week. And again, this could be pre-fatigue, it could be a post-fatigue accessory finisher, it could be done as a standalone thing on a separate upper body day to your typical pressing day. The choice is yours, really. I personally like to integrate this kind of thing in where I'm doing something like a full body or an upper lower or a blended half body kind of split where I'll be doing all my compound pressing and rowing on one day and I'll do more of these accessory exercises on a separate day. There really isn't a right or wrong here. It just comes down to how you want to fit it into your training. I would recommend, again, that minimum of around three to five sets for this specific work per week to make sure you're covering those bases. But outside of that, put it wherever you like. Hopefully, this has given you a few different clues on how you might want to start integrating it into your own training. Give it a shot. Let me know how you go, and I'll see you guys next time.